Hey guys, it's me again and welcome to Gaming Chat Episode 3. First things first, really sorry I didn't get this uploaded at the weekend on Saturday as promised. Uh, Saturday I didn't actually have enough time. I, th I thought I would do but I didn't, so huge apologies for that. Yesterday I tried to record and for some reason there was a huge amount of interference in the audio and try as I might I tried to get rid of it and I couldn't. Long story short I've got to do the video again which I'm not too happy about as you could understand. Uh, anyway we're going to cut right to it now. Uh, today's topic then uh, Lawn Boys Post 1975, good friend of mine, he made a video last week now about why I retro and I thought I'd do a response to that and in the process of doing that I thought I'd talk a little bit about my gaming history because I think that's going to be a good reason why, you know, that's going to be a contributing factor as to why I retro. I love the use of that as a verb by the way, I meant to say that. <laughs> so as a kid then, I started gaming really early, I think I must have been about three or four at the time and my first system, I'm not entirely sure which one it was but it was either the BBC Micro or the Amiga 500 so just for argument's sake I'll say I started on the BBC Micro it probably was that. Uh, it was my dad's, he, he basically bought it to um, learn how to program, to code. Uh, I think he made a few things but nothing too outstanding you know. I played games like Mr. Men, oh I love Mr. Men on that computer. <laughs> uh, Snooker which was like, oh yeah, fun story with that too. <laughs> it's so sad, but I used, to, <laughs> as a kid, I used to have some funny things I'd say, um, and one of them was from that game. I go, babble beep, <laughs> babble beep, basically re trying to replicate the noises that that game made. Uh, that's funny, and um, a game called Super Hangman as well, which is the vi the. The game I mentioned in one of my earlier videos where I said I didn't know what the game was and it made that Chopin's Funeral March tune. The one that scared me basically as a kid. <laughs> and um, yeah, that, I think that's most, pretty much all the games I've played on it besides a couple of others I forget. Killer Gorilla. Killer Gorilla, I used to love that game too. And a few others probably. Um, and yeah, as a point of note now, if I forget anything major I'll put them in text or something. Anyway, Amiga 500 was next up. That one was my brother's. I uh, played on that and there were a heck of a lot of games that he had for that. And some of the greatest games I played on that were Chucky Egg, Speedball 2, Rodland, Pang, Lemmings. But yeah, a lot of different games on there. And that one was probably... Well, no, it is one of my favourite systems for sure. And I don't think it's my favourite though necessarily, but we'll get into that later perhaps. Next up then, the first console I actually owned, uh, as in I actually bought myself and that, the SNES, or the SNES if you prefer. Uh, some great games on that one, such fond memories. Uh, games such as The Lion King, which are a fun story with that one. Uh, we went to town, uh, I must have been about six or seven at the time, we went to town, like me and my parents, and we were going around shopping and went to the local game store or more of an electronics, I think it was an all-purpose electronics store actually and they, back in the good old days when they would actually display the games you know, so you could play them and they had the Lion King on. I couldn't get past the second level when I was playing at home so then I went to, um, you know, I played it in the shop and I couldn't get past it then either and, that, and my parents were going, oh we've got to, come on now, we've got to go you know, as parents do, and I was thinking, oh, I want to stay and play. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we ended up leaving, and we went to, uh, I think it was like the co op, the food co op anyway, because you've got the bank and the food shop. We went to the co op, and being the naughty little scamp that I was, I ran off and went back to the store because <laughs> I wanted to get past that level. It was, it was the monkey puzzle I was struggling with, where you have to rule the monkeys and get them faced in a certain way so you can complete it. And I did, <laughs> after a bit, <clears throat> and then I think the enormity of what I'd done kicked in at that point. I started thinking, oh god, I've, I've probably worried them senseless running away. So obviously I ran back to try and, you know, well, to try and salvage it or whatever, and they gave me such a good telling off that day. They really did. Uh, but fun times. <laughs> it was fun to remember. And then other games like, um, we got... Things like Super Mario All-Stars, which I brought with it, Mario World, Yoshi's Island, Plock, which is an underrated platformer in my opinion. I really love that game. 
and cool spot, and there's another story with that. Basically, in the men menu it said if you beat the game on hard, the hard mode, a screen will come up and you can take a picture of it and send it off to Version Interactive, who are the developers, and they would send you a prize. A wallet. <laughs> now I know what you're probably thinking, oh that's not anything really special, it's a bit dusty and dirty actually because it's been stored somewhere, but um, but yeah, you're probably thinking, oh that's not a very good prize, but you got to remember, I was only six or seven at the time, and to me this was this was really awesome. Just to be able to send off, you know, it felt so rewarding to complete it on hard and then to get something for it is awesome. Um, and then other things like Mario Kart and other the more obscure titles like Mario's Time Machine, Yoshi's Island, and then there are a few games I played later in retrospect, but they were all the ones I played at the time. Well, most of the ones I played at the time. Then when I was once again about six or seven, it must have been just after all of this, I had to have my tonsils taken out and I had to go in the hospital obviously to have that done. While I was there, back then I wanted a Game Boy because they were out and I was thinking, oh I'd love to get one of those. Uh, for, obviously for things like Tetris and Super Mario Land. But my parents didn't buy me one of those, they bought me a Game Gear instead. And I was a bit disappointed at the time, but at the same time, to be fair, I thought the Game Gear the Game Gear is a more powerful system, isn't it? It's got colour anyway. <laughs> yeah, that immediately makes it better, doesn't it? But no, I think it is. I'm pretty sure it's just a portable master system. I mean, obviously there's gonna be someone there who'll be like out there will be like, oh no, the the Game Boy is better if it is, but I I assume it is better, but I could be mistaken. In any case, I'm waffling. Uh yeah, I've got the Game Gear, played games like um Sonics. Sonic 1, 2, Chaos, yeah Sonic Chaos, Donald Duck's Lucky Dime Capers which was a pretty fun game, Columns which was my Tetris effectively, um, yeah the music in that still sticks with me to this day actually, <laughs> much like I suppose Tetris does to others, and that was most of it, I didn't get that many games for the Game Gear but it still holds a place in my history. Then I got the Mega Drive which back then it was really all about the SNES and the Mega Drive for consoles and you were either, well obviously not everyone would have fit into this category but most people tended to either be a Mario or a Sonic person. I'm more of a Mario person it has to be said but I still like Sonic a lot. Uh, got distracted by a bin van there, that was a bin lorry there, that was really funny because <laughs> I've got the windows open. Um, uh, windows open, the curtains open, sorry. Um, but yeah, anyway, as I was saying, the Mega Drive uh, got games like Sonic 1 again, Sonic 2, 3, Knuckles, all the 2D ones basically, 3D as well, Spinball, yeah, I've just listed them all, uh, Mickey Mania, NBA Jam, He's on Fire, yeah, I love that one, and um, didn't realise we were at a train station. <laughs> um, Okay, and the FIFA games, I think that, that pretty much covers most of the games I got back then. Oh yeah, Echo the Dolphin, I got that fairly late as well. Could never do that game, that was one, that's one of only a very small handful of games I've played that I couldn't do. I couldn't figure out how to get past a certain stage, and even now I like playing, um, playing it in a compilation. You know, I mean I haven't bothered trying to work it out or looking it up in a guide, but just didn't get through it. And then, although I don't, I don't know whether I'd say this is my favourite system, but I suppose the fact that I'm going to say this probably does make it that. It's probably the one that I have the fondest place in my heart for, the N64. That was the era when you were either an N64 or a PlayStation player, and I didn't at the time see the appeal of the PlayStation personally, so I got the N64, the continuity from Nintendo. I didn't really fancy getting the Saturn because that was the other system that was around the Sega Saturn and for some reason I didn't really bother with that either but I don't remember why now um, but anyway Mario 64 still probably the most impressed I've been by a game possibly for when it was released There's a, there's been two or three others but I think that one was probably the biggest awe inspiring moment I've had and probably is for many others uh, it's probably one of the most revolutionary games ever made, to be honest. 
but at the same time to play it back I personally don't find it nearly as fun as it was the first time around I think a lot of the other games even on that system and earlier systems too were more fun to play on the second sweep I, I just think Mario 64 hasn't really aged all too well I'm afraid uh, but it's still really good you know it's still a good game and it's still worth playing again and the, you could play I suppose the uh, DS version of it with Luigi, Wario and I thought there was another character, but I can't remember who. Yoshi? <laughs> I don't know. And then other things like GoldenEye, which is many people's favourite game on the system as well, but I personally think Perfect Dark's just a tad better, because it improved on everything in every way, like multiplayer graphics, uh, music, well, music arguable, I suppose, but I just thought all around it was better than the multiplayer. Even the multiplayer, which was GoldenEye's bread and butter, really, was better. I thought, because you could even have fun playing on your own, let alone with friends, and obviously playing with friends is a blast. So that's that. Other games like Donkey Kong 64, Banjo-Kazooie, Tui, um, Mischief Maker is a really obscure platform, 2D platform game, and I thought that one was a, you know, a really fun game. I, it's one of the most underrated games I think I've ever played, in my personal opinion. Lots of other things, Mario Kart 64, Mario Tennis, Mario Golf, quite a few others I've totally forgotten, I dare say I'll kick myself after this, but I'll put them up, if there's anything notable I'll put, put it up after. And then I did get a Game Boy at some stage during the N64's uh, lifespan, yeah. I didn't get to play Tetris in the end, for some reason I didn't, I just passed on it, I didn't want it then for some reason, but I did get Mario Land and Mario Land 2. Mar uh, bleh, bleh, bleh. Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3 and then there are a few other games as well, like Pokemon or Pokemon. I always say Pokemon so you're going to have to... Uh, I, I, was, I can only apologise for constantly mispronouncing that but I always, always say Pokemon because Pokemon is way too hard to say obviously. I have to think about it every time I say it if I want to pronounce it that way. But that's virtually all the Game Boy games and then next up would have been the GameCube and that was the era where you're either a PS2 or an Xbox player or a GameCube player. And it was the least popular of the three in that gen. Uh, once again, I didn't really have any inclination to get a PlayStation 2 at that time. Because there was no reason at the time for me to do so. And an Xbox kind of passed me by mostly. I did get to play it at a bit later on and I just thought the controller was awful. <laughs> I honestly think the, X the original Xbox controllers the worst controller ever designed that I've come across. I think there are probably others that are going to be worse, but I just could not get on with the controls. I just It was just too big, too clunky, and no, it just didn't work for me. But obviously other people might disagree. I've heard the Dreamcast one's pretty bad, so I did play that briefly too, but I think the Xbox one actually was worse for me, but I don't know. Digressing. Some of my favourite games I played on that. Luigi's Mansion. That was interesting, because that was the first... Um, I believe anyway, the first Nintendo console where they didn't launch with the Mario game. Technically you could argue it was because Luigi was in it, but it's not really a Mario game. Not a conventional Mario game, but Luigi's Mansion I really enjoyed. Other games like... Um... Yeah, that's a good game too. <laughs> uh, things like um, Wave Race Blue Storm. Mario Kart Double Dash, which is possibly my favourite Mario Kart game ever. I was very sceptical about the double the double team aspect to it, you know, the tag team where you have two carters on the one cart, but when I actually played it I just thought it was immense fun and it just seemed to work, it seemed so natural for some reason. So I, inst I pretty quickly forgot about that. Other games I've played, Mario Sunshine, which I personally think is the worst Mario game ever, at least the, the worst the worst in the main franchise, the main series or whatever you want to call it. You're not counting the sports games, the educational games or anything like that. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, I thought it was a good game in its own right, but compared to other ones it didn't do it for me. I think the, the storyline was really quite pathetic. <laughs> I, have to say, I, 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 I really didn't like the story. I mean, yeah, fair enough, it's a Mario game, it's not reputed for its story, but the story was was just, well, it was just off the wall, really. I can't think of any other way to put it. I mean, because if you've played the game, obviously, you'll know you go to an island, you have to clean up graffiti because, well, 
I would say spoiler alert, but it's so old now. Baby Bowser basically causes trouble dressed as, Ma uh, Shad as Mario, shadow form. And yeah, and you have to clean the graffiti, which I just think is a really bad premise, honestly. But to be fair, the gameplay in itself is really good. Like, you know, it, it controls well and everything. Uh, the bonus levels are fun, and that's probably the most fun part for me. The blue coins I hated, though. I really hated the blue coins. I, uh, having to be on a specific shine in many instances to get it, and screw it in a specific place. It was basically luck. I mean, some of them you could sort... Some of them were obvious you had to squirt an M. Some of them you might figure out on your own, like, okay, that looks a bit suspicious, so I'll, sc I'll scan it. I'll squirt it. But then there were other things you just had to squirt random objects, it seemed, and that just turned me off. So it's the only Mario game I've never 100 percented as a result. Uh, so I just couldn't be bothered. But Zelda The Wind Waker was another game. That one was... <coughs> That one received a lot of flack for the graphical style at first, but then you actually play the game and it turns out to be really immense fun and I'm so glad I didn't listen to all the critics back then because it's one of my favourite Zeldas. And I think that covers most of the GameCube era. It's funny actually looking back now, I think that I think that actually it was a better system than the sales figures suggest I guess. but. At the same time, because I didn't really play the Xbox or the PS2, I probably shouldn't really say that. <laughs> but at the same time, I think perhaps it could have done a bit better. But that was back when Nintendo didn't really market things very well. Um, next up then was the Game Boy Advance. I got that during the, the GameCube era. And games like Pokemon, Ruby and Sapphire, Wario Land 4. The Mario Golf and Tennis games, uh, Power Tour and, well, Advance Tour and Power Tour. They were really fun, I thought. I, I wish Nintendo would do that again, because I, I really found those uh, career modes genuinely very fun, and I actually did feel, granted I was about 14 at the time, or however old, I was a teenager anyway, but it really felt like you were actually becoming a tennis star or a golf star. It just was a really, I thought, a well-designed career mode. And I didn't really get all that many more for the system. I got, I think I got Fire Red, the remake of Pokemon Red, for whatever reason. But other than that, that's most of the games I think I've just said. And Minish Cap, Zelda Minish Cap's the other major one. Which I thought was really fun, in spite of the fact it wasn't actually developed in-house, it was developed by Capcom. And I thought that was really fun though. So that's that one. And then we get on to the modern day stuff. I got the Xbox 360 and it's probably turned out to be my most played console ever or if it, or at least probably second most. I would. It's either that or the N64 I would guess I've played most. Some great games I've played on that then are... Um, I did like Perfect Dark Zero which was the game I actually got the system for because of how much I enjoyed the original. And yes, fair enough, I don't think it was as good as the original in terms of fun anyway but I don't think it was as bad as a lot of people said I, I really think it got a little bit harshly criticised but I thought it was really fun anyway it's not my favourite game ever but it was still alright while it lasted I thought like to play through the uh, campaign I didn't play that much online though I, I think I played one match or something I, I don't know or I played multiplayer briefly I, it might have been local multiplayer I forget but I, don't, I can't really comment much on the multiplayer of that game was the games like Cameo Elements of Power, which I did really like the first time through, but I've never felt like playing through again, which is a shame. Um, Viva Pinata. That was a different kind of game. I didn't think I'd like that one, but I did. I really did. I thought that was a good game. You basically have to raise pinatas, obviously, in in a garden, and you have to obviously go through a, a sort of career mode, and you get certain items to do certain things to get the residence for the piñatas and then you have to encourage them by doing other things etc etc and that was pretty fun and then Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion which yeah my favourite game on the Xbox 360 for sure and obviously I'm playing Skyrim at the well I haven't played Skyrim actually for the last couple of weeks but chances are once I've finished this uh, uh, making the video I probably will but um, so I'll just cross for Oblivion and Skyrim. Other games like, well yeah, I may as well mention it, Sonic the Hedgehog 2006, which has got to be one of the worst games I've ever played. It really has. In, in theory, the ideas weren't too bad. I mean, a lot of people hate the 3D Sonics, but I personally think, give them a chance, you know, just see how they play. But it didn't play very well. In terms of just generally, it sort of did. 
But what I really objected to was the loading. It was ridiculous. It really was. You'd have one bit of text. Well, no, say you play a mini game. You'd have to talk to the person and say, "Would you like to play this mini game?" And you go, "Yeah." A loading screen pops up. Okay. And then it says, "Jump through the hoops in the time limit." As an example, loading screen. Play the game. It lasts sort of say 30 seconds. I don't know. You finish the game. Loading screen. Then, well done, you did this, here's your reward. Loading screen. And you just get really fed up with it after a while. I mean, yeah, you don't have to do all those side missions. But at the same time, because I like to do as much as I can in a game, I did. Or did as many of them as I could, I think. Because I think certain missions you have to do with other characters, maybe, I don't know. I only had enough patience to go through the game of Sonic, either way. And I just, no, terrible game. Really was. Poorly programmed, really poor. It's one of the few games actually I, I have such a harsh opinion on. I don't have a harsh opinion on very many games, but that is one of them. This was the era, uh, the console where I went through a Japanese RPG phase, and I got games like um, Enchanted Arms, which is the reason my channel name is what it is, in case you were wondering. Two of the protagonists' names combined into one. Uh, I wouldn't say it's my favourite. Japanese RPG though, but I did find it genuinely good fun when I played through it. Random battles got a bit tedious, but you know, it was still really enjoyable I thought on the whole. And then Eternal Sonata, which is just a, a wonderful game, uh, really. <laughs> and um, Tales of Vesperia, which is probably my favourite of all of them I've played this generation. Just thought, just thought everything about it was wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Aha, wonderful. I turned into Wario. Do I missed. Final Fantasy XIII, which I'd never played a Final Fantasy game before because obviously I didn't own a PS1 or 2 and don't even have a PS3. At the moment, anyway. But, uh, <laughs> no, I just can't warrant getting one. It's not because I don't want one, it's just because I've got so many games I've got to get through and I, I just haven't got the time. Because I didn't own a PlayStation console, I didn't get a chance to play the earlier ones. And it was the first one I played. And... There were mixed reviews about it. Most people criticised the linearity, a lot of people criticised the lack of missions until near the end of the game. I thought, on a technical level, it's the most astounding game I've played to date, honestly. I've got the second one I've got to play through, so that might change, but... Graphically, can't fault it. Sound, can't fault it, again. It's not my favourite soundtrack, but it's still pretty high up there. Uh, story? I thought was fine. A lot of people have said, oh, it was weak and it's not as good as other Final Fantasy games. I don't have that bias, so I just took it as it was. And I thought it was a pretty good story, not the best. I think, to be honest, I, a couple of the other games I've played this generation have been better for that. Japanese RPGs, I mean. And that's virtually all of it. But the interesting thing about the 360 was I went into an arcade phase. I, I for much of it, much of this era, probably about a half of it actually, I really obsessively played a lot of Xbox Live Arcade games and many of them were retro. For instance, Frogger, which I really love, Scramble also really love, Gyrus, which was an eye-opener because I'd never played that one before, I love that one too, um, Time Pilot, Contra, loads and loads of others, but obviously the most defining moment for me was Robotron 2084. That is my favourite coin-op game of all time, for sure. It is just so fun to play and for a game that is really pretty simple in all honesty in how it's designed to a, in a manner of speaking anyway it's one of the deepest gameplay experiences I've ever had let alone for an arcade game you know it's, it sounds silly to say that an arcade game like that is deep but really it is it's just really clever how it's programmed and the way it just makes you want to keep trying over and over again, even though you keep failing continuously, and you just have to. You've got to keep playing just one more go, and I just really love that game. I would love to have a Robotron cabinet one day. I really would, but I just don't see that happening, so... Oh well. And then pseudo-retro games. I'm not entirely sure if that's the correct term, but I've heard that term before. Things like Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, which... I gather is most like a game called River City Ransom, but I never actually played that one. So I liken it more to Streets of Rage, which is kind of similar to that as well. And then Super Meat Boy. 
Now that one is my favourite Xbox Live Arcade game for sure because that one is kind of a, an old school platformer and to me it's just perfect really. It's got really good music, good cartoony like visuals, a good difficulty curve. It starts off really easy and then gets progressively harder and harder to the point where it's almost unfair. Almost, but not quite. It still, for me, goes hovers on the right side of that line. It's it's just really well designed, I think. And then you even have some throwbacks to 8-bit um, style games with the Warp Zone. Oh, hang on. Warp Zone! I just thought it was really fun all across the board. And then finally, for the home console, or yeah, so as I say, classic, I got the Nintendo Wii. Which I didn't get till very late because honestly when it first came out, the only things it had going for it in my opinion was Twilight Princess and Metroid Prime 3. And pretty much everything else was either games that just didn't interest me or honestly really casual stuff that, well I wouldn't say barely can be classed as a game, but there's very little substance to them. They're only for, you know, hence casual, they're only for 5-10 minutes at a time or playing with your family and friends or, well, young family really and maybe your friends. You know, none of them really interested me. And I was a bit sceptical about buying the Wii at first because obviously, like many people, I was sceptical about the motion sensing and I didn't really want to wave my arms around and all that sort of stuff. But I have to say, as the generation's gone on, I've kind of come round to it. I can't really imagine the games without them anymore. But anyway, along with the games I mentioned, the three games I mentioned before, um, I also play Metroid or the Ram, Donkey Kong Country Returns, Okami, which was also on the PS2, but for me that's one of my most unique gaming experiences, if not the I've ever had, and it's one of my favourite games of all time for sure. It's a lot like Zelda in many respects with the gameplay, but that's pretty much where the similarity ends, because everything else about it, it just brings about its own style, its own different feel to it, you just, it's like a whole other world, and it's just really... It just has the lot, great music, art design, story, and some of the scenes in the game, the writing, the, the scenes in the game are just funny. There's one in particular about halfway through, which I'm not going to say what happens because it's the sort of thing you should experience for yourself. But there is one scene, and if you've played the game through to completion, you'll probably know which one I mean. Um, it's basically one of the last cities of the game and there's a little temple and you meet somebody there <laughs> and that's all I'm gonna say. Xenoblade Chronicles which is my favorite game on the system I think. Kinda of like Akami only not quite as... Well, it's not... Um, I wish I knew the, the way of describing the different like water pastel or something. I wish I knew how to describe the actual art. It wasn't cell shaded or anything like that but it was actually more polygons and things like that. The graphics were really good for the Wii for sure uh, probably the best game graphically on the Wii actually um, give or take anyway the soundtrack is my favorite of all time it is that good I just thought it's just got the lot a good mix of everything and even the not so good tracks are, are really good because uh, normally with a soundtrack you'll get loads of great ones and you'll get a few you're not really bothered about granted there are one or two and they're the more ambient tracks like the Bionis interior, which I hope that's not too much of a spoiler, <laughs> but um, you do get to that point fairly early in the game to be fair, so that's not really that much of a spoiler. But yeah, apart from the odd thing like that, the tunes are just so great, I just can't champion them enough. And the gameplay is really fun, the story is really well written, and the scenes, the cinematics are wonderful too. I mean, they're, they're never going to beat something like Final Fantasy XIII in terms of technical prowess. But at the same time, they're really well done. They really are. I can't really fault them. The one thing I like more about that game than Final Fantasy XIII was it actually gave you side missions from pretty much the, the beginning. After a little prologue where it teaches you how to play anyway. All you have to do is basically wander to the first town and ta-da! New quests. And other games like New Super Mario Bros. Wii, Mario Party 9 obviously, and that's virtually it. The last two systems I had, I'll amalgamate them into one. The Nintendo DS and 3DS. Games like Dragon Quest IX, Pokemon Black White, and Diamond and Pearl as well, forgot that, do. And Mario Kart DS, Mario Kart 7, uh, Super Mario 3D Land, New Super Mario Brothers. All really good games, I think. 
So then, that's a concise or not so concise gaming history. Well, it depends how much I edit out. But it doesn't really answer the question, does it? Why do I retro? Well, I think number one, obviously, is for the nostalgia. It's really good to go back to these old games and just play them again and remind you of happier times in your life. Second reason, and this is probably more important, is there's a magical quality that I'm not saying isn't present in modern day games, but there's a different kind of magic in retro games you just don't get in modern day games. And I can only put it down to the fact that modern day games are quite complex now. And the the older games were more simple and so if you just pick up a player, pick up and play them, have a bit of fun with them, not get too involved. You could come back, take breaks, all that sort of stuff. There's just something about them, isn't there, that, that's different from modern day games and you can't really replicate them very easily at least. And you, you can't seem to replicate them if you actually do make them 3D and more advanced anyway. If you make it like Super Meat Boy you kind of can. But apart from that, not really. And they're just, generally speaking, got better difficulty curves. They're generally chal more challenging on the whole. And just all in all a really well rounded package and good fun to play even though the graphics aren't necessarily the best and the sounds aren't necessarily the best. It's still nice to hear them again. I mean, some of the sound effects from games like Robotron, there's just something about those. You can't really match those, can you? <laughs> so, yep, yeah, that will do then, guys. That's my response to Lawn Boys Post 1975's question. And to finish off, I just want to know a little bit about you, about your gaming history, and if you retro, why do you retro? And if you don't retro, why not? <laughs> uh, but seriously though, if you don't retro, is it just because you missed out on it or you, don't, you just don't see the appeal or you're just one of these who has to move on with the times and just cut everything else off and pretend it didn't happen kind of thing? Not that there's anything particularly against that, but I'd just, I'd just be interested to know really because I don't think you can ever truly do that, but you never know. Could be wrong. So that concludes Gaming Chat 3. I hope you're all doing well and having an awesome day or night wherever you are. I'll see you next time for Gaming Chat 4, hopefully on time. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that guys, but hopefully it will be on Saturday as normal. See you next time.